In this episode we're finally gonna add music and sound effects to the game. So let's go! The primary component that we need to make the audio work is the audio listener. By default it's attached to the main camera and it does exactly what it says, it listens for audio. If you manage to delete it by accident then any sound can be played, music, sound effects, whatever, but you won't be able to hear anything. So it's a good practice to check if the audio listener is there and if it isn't you can simply use add component to add it yourself. If you take a look at the Unity documentation, you'll see that the audio listener acts as a microphone-like device, which means that it receives the sounds from the game and it plays them through the speakers. And another important detail is the fact that each scene must have only one audio listener in order for it to work properly. This is why it's a good practice to keep the audio listener on the main camera and not add it somewhere else. Alright, we're done with the first part. Now let's move on to the second component. For this we need to create a new game object and call it sound manager. Once you're done, reset its position, then add a new component of type audio source. And if you want to understand what an audio source means, it's basically the component that plays a sound. As you can see, its first field is an audio clip, and this is where we will drag an audio file like sound effects or music. It also has a bunch of other options like volume, pitch, stereo pan, but for now I just want us to check the play on awake option. This will enable our audio source to play the sound exactly when the game starts. So the only thing that's left now is to pick a sound to be played. But before we do that I'm gonna make another folder called audio where we're gonna put all the sounds and music that we're gonna use in this episode and in the game in general. I've prepared a couple sounds and a soundtrack and if you wanna use the same ones I'm gonna put the link in the description. For now let's just pick the sword hit one and assign it to the sound manager audio clip. So now when you start the game you will hear this sound. Awesome, this is officially the first sound that we've added to our game. The next option that's gonna be important for us is looping, which makes the sound repeat after it ends. This was just for demonstration purposes, so for now let's disable play and wake, loop and remove the audio clip. The next option I want you to be aware of is the spatial blend. And pay attention that underneath the slider on the left side you have 2D and on the right side you have 3D. When an audio source is turned all the way to 2D, the sound that it makes will be heard at the same value regardless of the distance. But if you turn it to 3D, the sound will become more quiet when you get far away from the audio source. To show you how this works I made a quick prototype using some 3D assets. In the middle of a scene we have a bonfire with an audio source attached to it that makes this sound. And we have a standard third person Unity controller that allows us to move and look around. So as you can see here, when I turn the slider to 3D the sound will get more quiet. But when you get close to the bonfire, it will become loud again. In our platformer we will not bother with this feature and we will use one audio source. But if you are working on a more complex game where you want the sounds to be more realistic, keep in mind that you can use this option. In this case you would need multiple audio sources positioned around the objects that you want to make the noise. So for example each enemy and gun will have an audio source. And also keep in mind that you can use 3D sounds in 2D games as well. Back to our project. The third element that we need to play an audio is an audio clip. Obviously this is just an audio file. It could be an mp3, a uav, an ogg. Unity supports most formats. That's the end of our introduction. Now let's go into the script's core folder and create a new script called sound manager. When it's ready attach it to the sound manager object and open it up. First of all we're gonna need an audio source variable to access the audio source component and play the sounds. In the awake method we're gonna use get component to assign the variable. Then we're gonna create a public void called play sound which takes in an audio clip argument. Next we're gonna type source.play one shot and pass in the underscore sound parameter. The play one shot method allows us to play an audio clip only once, which is what we're gonna use for the sound effects. Now the question is, how do we make this script easily accessible to other scripts? And for this purpose I'm gonna use something that's called a singleton pattern. Which, as you can see, involves creating a public static variable of the same class as this one called instance. 
Making a variable like this one static ensures that it will be stored in the memory as the only copy. So there can be no other sound manager instance while we have this one. Which is good because the next time when another class wants to reference the sound manager, we don't need to create a reference for it like we usually do. We can just type in soundmanager.instance and call the method. I'm also gonna add the get private set accessors, which are gonna allow us to access this instance from outside scripts, but modify it only inside this one. This is why we used private set. If you wanna know more about singletons, I have a 60 second tutorial on this topic. Next up, we need to create a singleton by saying instance equals this inside the awake method. And that's it. Now we can use the sound manager to play sounds. Let's go back into Unity and open the player attack script. As I said previously, we need to send an audio clip to the sound manager in order for it to be played. So we're gonna create a private audio clip called fireball sound in here and serialize the field. And now we can simply go inside the attack function and say sound manager dot instance play sound and pass in the fireball sound. And that's it. It's that easy. Now we can go back into Unity and assign the fireball sound. Apply the changes to the prefab, hit play and enjoy the results. Now let's open the ranged enemy prefab, open the ranged enemy script and do the exact same thing. First let's create a header called fireball sound and underneath it create a private audio clip variable with the same name. And now we can go to the ranged attack method and play the sound using the same syntax as earlier. After that don't forget to go back into Unity and assign the fireball sound. Next up, let's open the melee enemy prefab and open the melee enemy script. We're gonna follow the exact same process. Create a header for the attack sound and a private audio clip for the sound itself. And in this script, we wanna access the sound manager and play the attack sound exactly after we trigger the melee animation. Now let's go back into Unity and assign the attack sound. This time we're gonna pick the sword hit audio file. Now we can go back to our scene, drag in a melee enemy and see how he sounds. Alright, this is great, but we have no sound for when the enemy is being hurt or when he dies, so let's fix that next. Open the health script and add a header called death sound, then a private audio clip with the same name. Now you probably figured this out by yourself, but we are gonna play the sound right here after we trigger the death animation and assign the dead variable. When you're done, let's go back to the editor and assign the death sound in the player prefab and also the melee enemy and ranged enemy prefabs. And the exact same sound effect will be used for the player when his health reaches zero. I'm kinda tired of seeing the enemies smack the player after he's dead, so let's take a second to fix that. Let's open the melee enemy script and after we check if the cooldown timer is bigger than the attack cooldown, we're also gonna check if the player's current health is bigger than zero. And that's it, that should do it. This is better, but we still have no sound for when the enemy or the player is being hurt, so let's add that next. Open the health script and create another private audio clip and call this one hurt sound. We're gonna play this sound inside the take damage method, but when the current health is bigger than zero. And now let's open the prefabs of the melee enemy, the player and the ranged enemy and assign the hurt sound for all of them. When you're done, let's press play and see how it sounds. A 
As you can hear, the hurt sound is working properly. Next up, let's implement the jumping sound for the player. Open the player movement script and as always create a new header and a private audio clip variable. We'll call this one jump sound, serialize the field and go down to the jump method. My first instinct when making this video was playing the sound right here before we trigger the jump animation and assign the vertical velocity. Let's switch back to Unity and assign the jump sound, which is supposed to sound like wings flapping. Drag this audio clip into the jump sound field, press play and see what happens. The result definitely sounds weird and that's because sometimes multiple jump sounds are being played when you jump once. So we'll need a workaround for this issue. The problem here is that input.getKey gets called multiple times. It's called when you start pressing the spacebar, when you keep holding it and when you release it. So obviously this is not good if we want to play our sound only once. But what we can use instead is input.getKey down. And if you check the documentation, you'll see that input.getKeyDown gets called only during one frame when the user starts pressing down the key. So that's exactly what we need. Then we're also going to check if the player is grounded, and if that's the case, we're going to play the jump sound. Now let's see if it's working properly after this change. And this is indeed the case. The jump sound gets played only once now. Now let's move on to the traps. First of all, I want to add a sound when the arrow trap shoots. So let's open the arrow trap prefab and we'll use this sound for this purpose. Open up the arrow trap script and create a new header and an audio clip for the arrow sound. Naturally, we'll play the sound inside the attack map. Then we'll go back into Unity and assign the audio clip. Now to see if it works, find the arrow trap prefab, drag it into the scene and press play. So everything's working great here. Let's move on to the fire trap. As we did like a thousand times already in this video, open up the prefab, then open the script and create a new header and a private audio clip. And here we need to make sure that the fire trap sound is being played after the activation delay. The order of lines is important in this case because if we play the sound before the delay, the players are gonna hear the fire trap, but the trap will not be activated yet, which is gonna be all sorts of weird. Now let's go back into the editor, check out the fire trap sound, and drag it into the fire trap sound field. Now you need to make sure that you have a fire trap in your scene and press play to see how it works. Alright, everything works well here, so we can delete the fire trap and move on to the next trap, which will be the spike head. So let's open its script, and in here I want to add a sound effect for when the spike head hits something. So I'm gonna call the audio clip impact sound. You might remember that inside the onTriggerEnter2D method, we stop the spike head once it hits something. So in here we're gonna play this sound as well. And that's it. Now open the spike head prefab and attach the impact sound. Next I'm gonna place the spike head in the scene and delete the melee enemy to make it easier to test. Awesome! And the last sound effect that I want to add is when you pick up a health collectible. So let's open the prefab and script and create a private audio clip for the pickup sound. Then we're simply gonna play the sound when the player collides with the health collectible. Now all we have to do is go back into Unity and assign this sound as the pickup sound. And that's it. Now let's place a health collectible in the scene and also some spikes so that the player can take damage. And that was the last sound effect that we're gonna implement in this episode. Now let's take care of the background music. First of all, we need to create a new child object of the sound manager and we'll call it music source. As the name implies, it's gonna have an audio source attached to it and for the audio clip, we'll use this song. So first, let's attach the audio clip. 
then enable play on awake to make the song play right away and enable looping so that when it ends it starts over. Next up I want to change the volume to 0.15 because I want the music to be heard but not to be louder than the sound effects. And that's it, now you can press play and enjoy your new soundtrack. And if you're wondering where I got the music from or maybe you don't like it and you want to change the soundtrack, I got it from this site. It's from Patrick de Arteaga. And sorry if I got your name wrong, but thanks a ton for your music, it's really appreciated. And as you can see this guy offers a free license, which means that you can use this music even in your commercial games as long as you credit the website. Obviously I'm gonna put a link in the description so you can check it out if you want to. So we've done a great job, now we have background music. But if we would load a new level, the soundtrack would just cut off and start over again from the beginning, which is gonna sound pretty bad. This is happening because Unity by default when you load a new scene will destroy all the objects in this scene. So the sound manager that you see right here is gonna get destroyed and if you have another one in level 2, that one is gonna start playing the song from the beginning. But there is a fix for that. And to implement it let's open the sound manager script. Inside the awake method we can use a function called don't destroy and load and pass in the game object. And it does exactly what it says, it doesn't destroy this game object when you load a new level. Simple. But doing this also has a risk of creating duplicate objects. So if for example inside level 2 we have another sound manager, we will have two songs playing simultaneously and also we'll have two instances, which is not good. The solution for this is to check if the instance is no, and if it is we're gonna say that instance is this object and we're not gonna destroy it on load. If the instance is not null and it's not equal to this object, that means that we have a duplicate object. In this case we just say destroy game object to destroy the duplicate. So this code right here is enough for us to make sure that our soundtrack never cuts off and that we have only one instance of type sound manager. Now let's go back into Unity and quickly load another level to see if this works as intended. The level that I created is located in the Levels folder, but I also have another folder called Scenes with an empty level inside it, which is very confusing, so I will simply delete it to avoid this confusion. Once you've detected your real level that you've been working on, you can duplicate it and call it Level 2. Now double click it to open it, and to know that you are in a new scene, just look in the top left corner. And to make this different from level 1, I'm just gonna position the player in the middle, while in level 1 it's positioned on the left side. Now let's open the build settings and drag in both level 1 and level 2. And just to explain this quickly, you need all the levels that you want to be in the game to be inside this window, otherwise they're not gonna load. But we're gonna have another episode dedicated just to creating levels, so we're gonna go more in depth on that one. For now inside level 1 let's create an empty game object and call it loading manager. Once you're done reset its position. Now let's go into the scripts folder and create a new script called loading manager. Then attach it to the new object. This script will be very very simple because we need it just for testing, so it's gonna contain only the update method. In here we're gonna check if the F key is pressed by using input.getKey down. And if that's the case we're gonna use the scene manager to load the scene with the index 1. And to make this work we need to include the using unity engine.scene management library. And if you're wondering why scene 1 when we need level 2, you'll see that in the build settings the count starts from 0. So level 1 has the index 0 and level 2 has the index 1. So now let's press play, let the soundtrack run for a bit, and when you're ready just press F and you'll see that the soundtrack will continue even though you go to a new level. And that's it for this episode. If you're wondering where you can get more sound effects and music, I'll have a list of websites in the description. And finally I want to give a special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters, Bo Gray, Ekister and Jason Ledbetter. And thanks to each and every one of you for watching this video. Stay safe and go make some games now.